and I welcome back to another episode of Sakurai Succubus 4. Now, we are back and talking with Hafumi. We just got into the beach house, and let me tell you, it looks very good considering A's taste on certain occasions, but Hafumi kind of make me backtrack to a certain degree, and that's probably not the only thing that kind of got me backtracked, if you guys remember the last episode. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, let's get back right into it. She is very easy to read. If me giggles again. As for myself, I prefer classic Japanese decor. Um, I will choose tatami mats over carpets or floorboards any day of the week. And I like the simplest elegance of sliding doors. There's so much glass here, I feel like it, it would take a long time to clean. This design may not be the most practical, but we all have our own tastes. I should not be so critical when AU was gracious enough to let us stay here. At least the baths are in typical Japanese style. They are very nice and deep. That's probably not the only deep thing that I'm probably gonna be swimming in tonight. You know what? I just oh, realized I, I need to chill. <laughs> I'm looking forward to having a bath tonight, but first, I must aid you with your unpacking. Shall we start with your shirts and pants? Yes, uh, that'd be great. Uh, you can hang them up there. I gesture to the wardrobe, if you really don't mind. Not at all, I'm happy to help. Nothing brings me more joy than caring for you. You spoil me too much, Hifumi. There's no such thing. Dining on you makes me happy. We are on vacation, so you should relax. Leave it all to me. Hifumi hums under her breath as she continues her work. She moves deftly. Not a single motion wasted and finished with the shirts far more quickly than I could. She really is a pro when it comes to all things household related. She is a domestic goddess. That that should probably tell you something, B. <laughs> there. Hafumi wipes her hands together and steps back, admiring the row of shirts hung up in the wardrobe. Let me sort out these creases. She pulls at the sleeve here and adjust a the collar there until she's completely satisfied with the fruit of her labor. Now, let's start on your pants. I shall not be a moment. Then, I can begin folding your underwear. Oh, um, color rises to my cheeks as Fumi picks up my pants. It's silly to be abashed about such a thing, giving everything I've done with Fumi, but the thought of her laying her white, slender fingers upon my underwear is a bit embarrassing. I think any of us, any us men, would literally... <clears throat> would say the same thing, but I highly doubt it considering the duration of how long they've been with that person. But you get my drift. Thanks for being so thorough. But I can handle my underwear myself! Perhaps you can, but I insist doing it myself. No choice is too small, my dear Yadaki. Handling your underwear is a great honor. I swear to God, your fucking face. It's like you and Marina. I swear to God, I cannot trust you both. I can't. Mm. But damn, God damn, y'all deserve. You know, I'm not gonna say that. I don't think there's anything that special about it. Then we must agree to disagree. There, now. Now that I finish your pants, your underwear is next. <laughs> Hifumi afflicts my suitcase with eager eyes. She's more enthused than this, than any demure Yamato Nadashirko rightly should. She approaches my suitcase, her arms outstretched when... Hey, Hideki! Hey, you! Hi! Um, what do you need? The door opens and a you steps in without bothering to knock. Perhaps such social neckties aren't necessary, given that this is her house. 
But I didn't expect her to see her. I didn't expect her to literally barge in so suddenly. I jumped, so does Hifumi. What are you doing here? Are you? I could ask you the same question. What are you doing here, Fumin? Don't tell me you come to pester Hideki already. You've only been here an hour. He hasn't unpacked yet, and you're already trying to make a move on him? Don't you have any shame? And you might have a point there. The way Hifumi was staring at my underwear was pretty shameless. Well, at least he w I was not the only person who actually thought that. I think you're misunderstanding my intentions, AU. I saw Hiroki out, so I might help him. I have been aiding him in his unpacking, as you should be able to see. I'm not trying to seduce him, not yet, in any case. Hafumi cast me a not so converse glance, grinning as she does. You can rest easy for now, you and Hiroki both. My beloved is too tired to indulge me, so I will not be selfish enough to demand his affection. That will come later. As it should. What do you mean by that? Ugh, you're so two-faced. You act like you care about Hiraki so much, but I know that's n nothing more than a ruse. That's, you're not as nearly as nice as you act, Afuman. You're so convenient. Hey, you, you offend me. It's true my feelings for Hideki are more ardent than those of a mother to her son or a maid to her master, but that should not diminish my good intentions. I am quite innocent of any crime you may think of accusing me of. God dang it. Oh, well, that's all right then. I can see I was mistaken. I guess I should let you two cuddle up nice and cozy. Then not! Now this is just straight up cute. <laughs> pillow bite! AU grabs a hold of a pillow and swift dirt and lightning hurls it at Hifumi. Oof! Hifumi recoils, but this isn't enough to stasize AU's anger. She sees another pillow and then another and hurls them both at Hifumi in rapid succession. Thud, thud. Uh, both pillows strike their targets true upon her apple bosom, which makes Fumi squeak. As if I believe that you're that pure. I wasn't born yesterday. You're every bit as much a succubus as I am, and I know precisely what you want. You're trying to stay hit the key yourself while the rest of us are busy settling in that's so underhanded well I won't have it if you're going to compete for his affection we should at least do it fairly you you yes you untrustworthy snake with the pointless huge chest what is he even for anyway those melons are massive guys might like this sort of thing but when you get past a certain point they may become Nothing but a chore. They're heavy and cumbersome. And they make it hard to find clothes that fit. Um, Ayu, I know her tits is big, but yours is at a very big size too. I, I, I'm wondering if she hasn't figured that out yet. <laughs> I'm wondering if she hasn't figured that out. Just saying. Dresses are too tight on the top, but too loose at the bottom. And most clothes squish them together like they look so unflattering big chests are so not cute she's so angry AU continues to hurl pillows at Hifumi alongside insults while Hifumi tries in vain to defend herself one of AU's throw knocks Hifumi's glasses a cue and they almost fall on her nose <laughs> though she was able to put the up in time although you had your fun but now things are getting out of hand you are pushing too much force into your throws if this keeps up you'll burn through those lovely pillows and then Hideki's room will be full with feathers now I would not want that to happen so Hafumi holds up one hand 
Suddenly, the air in the room grows thick and glistening. One of the A's pillows projectile freeze mid-air as though caught by an invisible hand. Fumi's clothes melt away. Meanwhile, revealing her succubus attire, wings unfurl from her back and the horns spout off from her head. Her eyes are glowing with the force of her magic, though she is smiling. Her expression is stern. Please, A.U., come to your senses. Let's not fight. You are the one who convinced Lady Yu of the benefit sharing has. And you did promise earlier when we were on the bitch. Be- uh, fuck. <laughs> fuck me. Like, I feel like Afumi is just trying so hard not to call her bitch. But, moving on. <clears throat> And you did promise earlier when we were on the beach that you would try to behave yourself. Marina was so very proud of you. I would hate for her opinion of you to sour over a silly pick of jealousy like this. Hmm. A.U. pouts, arms folded, and turns away. Using magic is a cheap way to end an argument. I wish you'd try to fight back. Throwing a pillow in my face? I don't share. I have no desire to do that. Your face is one of your great assets. Being an idol, I would not like to harm it. As if you could. They're pillows, not bricks. That may be the case, but when I take things seriously, I can be quite destructive. I fear my magic would omit my throws to a deathly degree. Even my pillows, even pillows can be dangerous if thrown with enough force. Remember, AU, I'm older than you and my magic is stronger. I do not want to hurt you. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you rolls her eyes. I'm not a weak, simpered maiden, you know. I can look after myself. But I guess you're right. I got a bit carried away there. I don't like seeing you cling to Hideki, but I've got to get used to it. If we're all going to be together. Sorry for being a brat, and, um, well, I'm sorry for throwing those pillows at you, Fumin. I hope I didn't hurt you. I'm fine, thank you for asking, and it looks like the pillows are fine, too. <clears throat> Fumi reject her magical spell, and the levitating pillows fall to the ground with a soft, inoffensive throop. Fumi's succubus attire melts away, as though it was never there. Her horns and wings vanish, and her casual attire knits itself anew over her body. She brushes herself down, adjusts her hair, and then smiles at a... There's no harm done, so you ha you have no need to feel guilty. I understand you have a short temper, but I bear you no ill will. Now, let us not fight. We both love Hiroki as much as we want. I doubt he will refuse. What do you say, dear? Yes, Hiroki, what do you say? Um, I guess it's fine if you want to cling on to me. I wouldn't push either of you away, to be honest. The more the merrier, right? I thought you would say that. Fumi smiles, then looks at Ayu. There you see, there's no reason to despair. I may have made the first move, but Hideki loves us all equally. Nobody shall be left out during this vacation. Now, why don't we put this room back in order? Then we can help Hideki unpack the rest of his clothes. We shall get things done more efficiently if we work together. Which is very true. She's got a point. <clears throat> With the vicious pillows fight concluded, <clears throat> the rest of the clothes unpacked, AU gives me a guided tour around her beach home. She walks me through the open plan ground floor with sprawling kitchen and living room. The numerous bathrooms, her private cinema, and her training room. Of course, I doubt you need to come in here. This is where I go when I wish to practice on my dance moves. This is more likely you'll be spending your time outdoors. Something tells me I'm going to be experiencing a lot more nosebleeds than I thought I would be. I have a very bad feeling. But you get what I mean when I say nosebleeds. I'm, I'm going to be a lot more redder in this series than I thought I would be. The beach is so gorgeous, it's hard to resist. My tour at an end. AU leads me back to my bedroom and wishes me a good night. 
It's pitch black at this point, almost midnight. I feel drained. It's with a large yawn I collapse upon my bed. My bed is large. The mattress is soft. And it sinks blingly beneath my weight. I feel like I've, I'm being enveloped in my arms of a very affectionate, very rectangular lover. I'm so tired. I could fall asleep right now with my clothes still on. Another yawn escapes my throat. Mindful of my manners, I press one to my mouth to stifle it. Not that it matters. There's nobody here other than me, myself, and I. Uh, I'm ready to pass out right now, but I feel a bit grimy after my flight. Should I take a bath first? Yeah, I have a bath. Fuck it. Yeah, I can't really pull this off. I feel gross. Upsy daisy. I heave myself up with no small amount of effort and slap my cheeks with both hands to spur myself on. Let's do this. It might sound childish, but I'm pretty excited to use my in sweet bathroom. It looks pretty fancy. There's nothing like a nice hot bath to ease your aches and pains. I'm rosed from my bed early the next morning by the scent of something delicious. Hifumi must be cooking something really good. I rise and then wash my face and brush my teeth in my in sweet bathroom. <clears throat> After getting dressed, I then descended to the ground floor, guided by the mouth-watering smell. It led me as a shepherd might lead a sheep, leaving me powerless to resist. When I arrived in an open plan kitchen come living <laughs> goddamn these damn innuendos area I'm greet with a cozy sight hey the food me is standing by the stove stirring a large pot of miso soup of course her lovely miso soup she's wearing the same casual clothes she wore yesterday with her dark treaches tied back with two untidy ponytails. Her pink shirt is a bit on the baggy side and it's slipping down to reveal an ample amount of her creamy white shoulder. Upon her snob nose are perked with a pair of glasses, the lenses of which are slightly steamy. I've seen Fumi cook before, but that was back when we were staying at the Ryoikin. Um, the interior there was classically Japanese, as was Hifumi's attire. Her hair straight and dark, her body robed in a richly patterned kimono. She's giving off quite a different impression now, but it's not a bad one. It's nice seeing Hifumi like this. Hey? Hifumi? Oh! Hello, Hideki. Did you just wake up? Yeah. I'm still kind of tired. I suppress a yawn with one hand, which makes Hifumi giggle. You must have been in a hurry to come downstairs. Your hair is all a mess. Let me. Hifumi turns the heat down on the stove and then approaches. She reaches up to her tippy toes and adjusts my hair accordingly. Her fingertips brush against my scalp. There you go. She steps back to admire her handiwork, smiling as she does. You look better now, very handsome. Thank you, you look good too. When you wear a kimono, you seem more like a well-to-do housewife. But right now, your vibes are more like those of a kind big sister, to be honest. A big sister? Well, well. The film he giggles. I kind of expected that, to be honest, because that's very true. Her casual attire does look like she looks like a big sister. Like, I'm being honest. Like, I was just saying that. I suppose that's not far from the truth. I like to think of myself as an older sister to my young, to the younger Succubi, but I've never 
been addressed as such manner by a man, why don't we try it? <laughs> what has this world come to? What has this world come to? I, I, I'm, oh God, okay. <clears throat> Oh God! Mm. I uh, oh oh shit! Oh okay no 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 I do not want it. <laughs> this is not a good sight. Oh my God! Oh sweet Jesus! Can you call me Big Sis, Hideki? Oh my god, when she's wearing that attire, I, I have no choice. I have no choice. None of you, none of you say a fucking word. Not a fucking word. Sure, if that's what you want. <clears throat> Good morning, big sis. <laughs> I'm done. No, the video's done. I can't do this. I'm done. 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 Oh my fucking god. That is just so adorable. Oh my god. Oh, I'm, 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 oh god. Oh god. Oh my god. Why does this happen to me? This girl is going to literally make me do something that I'm going to regret. Oh shit. My goodness gracious, this girl is killing me. Oh my God. <laughs> if only squeaks as though she's been poked with a pin and presses both hands with her cheeks. They're starting to turn red. Did I embarrass her? Yeah, 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 you yeah, add something that's so fucking so fucking obvious yet. Simp overload. Simp overload. Sweet Jesus. I think I'm gonna end it here. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna end it here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, make sure to leave a like. Also hit that subscribe button if you wanted to the channel. It's been that guys. Later. Bye.